Since Apple announced Stage Manager along with true external monitor support for iPad, I've wanted to make a desk setup based around it, but I've held off pretty much because the iPad OS 16 betas have been pretty buggy to say the least. However, with the newer betas rolling in, which are a lot more stable, I've managed to make a working setup that I actually really like, albeit with a side helping of issues. And I wanted to show that to you today, so let's get right into it. Let's briefly talk about this setup first. The desk I'm using is one I've had for a really long time. It's built from parts that I got at Ikea and it's been really great. You've most likely seen it on this channel before, but a brief revisit for those that are new. This is a Carby kitchen tabletop at 186 centimeters sitting on top of an annex drawer unit and a white trestle. I then got a Grove made desk shelf sitting on top of that. And the chair is also from Ikea. I do have an entire video on this desk setup and how the office looks normally. So I'll link that up here and I'll pop it in the description below if you do want a deeper dive. Sitting front and center though is my iPad Pro 12.9 inch and one of the main focuses of this setup was to ensure I could plug it in and out really, really quickly. To do that, I've left the iPad in its Smartfolio case, which is the one that I really liked before I started getting into keyboards on iPad. This basically props the iPad up on front of my desk and that's connected via one cable to my monitor. The monitor is the Dell U2720Q, which again I've had for a long time and I really, really like it. But the great thing about that monitor is the power pass through, which goes through USB-C. This effectively lets me plug in my iPad with one cable and that will take a display out to the actual monitor and it will also power it at the same time which is really really good and it's got a little party trick on the side of the monitor there's a USB-C and a USB-A slot which again links up through the iPad for that one cable and that means I can put in a little dongle so I can have an SD card reader or headphones or any other sort of in and outs that the iPad doesn't have so I can actually have it with that monitor which is great. I do have an entire video on that monitor as well, so I'll link that below if you're a bit more interested in how that all works too. One of the newer features as well in this beta is you can tell the monitor which side the iPad is on, so you can kind of use Stage Manager any way you like. But for me, it's definitely worked better at the bottom, and that's definitely the way I think Apple envisioned it. This lets the iPad still be like a touch-first device, and if you use the Apple Pencil a lot, like I do, then you can still use that without having to kind of reach over awkwardly. For a keyboard, I'm using the NewFi Halo 65 key which is a recent mechanical keyboard pickup that I've been really loving and I've got that paired with the Apple Magic trackpad and usually I wouldn't go near a trackpad for a desktop experience but with the iPad it's honestly a match made in heaven. All the gestures I'm used to using on the iPad pretty much all translate over to the trackpad and it works really well. Not to mention the way the iPad cursor snaps to buttons and toggles in iPadOS just seems to suit a trackpad input a lot more. All of those items including the iPad are sitting on my cheap but very cheerful desk mat from NTMY. I love the color on this one and the size is just perfect for me. Moving on to the desk shelf on the right I have my Mac Studio which of course is my main setup and I'm not suggesting for a second that this is better than that. It's a completely different experience but this allows me to switch to it quickly from my iPad if I ever need to and on the left I have my Nintendo Switch and while the iPad is good for gaming and getting even better now thanks to these new updates which we will get into in this video I I still find myself gravitating towards the Switch for any small spots in a day where I fancy gaming. It also nicely mirrors the grab and go setup I have with the iPad. I can simply grab it off the dock and take it with me and the same goes for the iPad and I can be good to go in seconds. I did think about having an iPhone or a watch dock sitting there instead but honestly my iPhone is such a distraction when I'm trying to get on with work and I think if it's just sitting there facing me it's just going to be really really distracting every time I get a notification or something and generally speaking I don't need to charge my iPhone in the day and the same goes for my watch if I put it on in the morning and if I've charged it overnight which is what I always do I very very rarely would need to charge it in the day so that's why I went for the switch in the end okay so I've been using this setup for around a week now and I've got to admit I've enjoyed it way more than I thought I would and that's really surprised me. I was going into this thinking it'll be fun but I know it'll be a little annoying but it's actually been a rather nice experience and I'm not going to pretend for a second that it's better than a MacBook or a dedicated desktop setup because at the moment it's not. But for knowledge based work like emailing, typing up documents, social media managing and even playing some games 
it's actually been pretty good. One of the best things about it is the way Stage Manager works really well at separating your workspaces. For example, I have my browser, email, and to-do open in one space for getting on with work. In another space, I have all the social set up, so Twitter, Instagram, and iMessage. And in another, I have some organizational apps like Notion, Weather, and GoodNotes. It's a good way of getting your head into specific working spaces. And it's also just been a really useful way for me to stay less distracted, which I've really enjoyed. If there's one thing I do hope Apple implements though, it's being able to kind of pin workspaces or sets of apps within Stage Manager, because right now, now I'm usually setting them up every time or if I close them by accident I have to reopen that set of apps to start again so it's not quite perfect yet. There have been some other things that I've really enjoyed about the iPad as well which is kind of intrinsically linked to it and the first off is instant on. The second you plug your iPad in everything's ready to go there's no loading or startup or anything like that which is really nice and it kind of adds to that instantaneous feeling of the iPad. Having two very separate screens as well is actually kind of awesome too so while I have have my display having all of the productivity stuff and all the work I'm getting on with. I can have the iPad screen for kind of loading up a lo-fi playlist or one of my favorite things to do recently is to use Lightroom to edit photos, you know, on that touch basis, which I really like and then I can export them and then use them kind of back on a more classic experience up here, which has been really good. But that's been one of the glimpses of how good this setup I think can really be. Something else I wanted to try this setup as well was gaming. Now that the iPad has full external monitor support, I was hoping we might see some full screen games. But sadly, on all the ones I've tried, and I did try a fair amount, none of them seem to want to support the entire 16 by nine aspect ratio, or at least not yet. However, there is one kind of cool feature, and it harkens back to what I was saying, is while you're playing a game on the main screen, the iPad screen stays blank. So if you need to look at a guide, or if you've got Discord open, or if you want to play music, or you know just keep an eye on your emails while you're enjoying some time away from work, then you can do that while you're carrying on with a game, which is really cool. I also can't imagine it will take developers too long to support a full screen ratio on the iPad, but we might just have to wait on that one, wait for the full version of iPadOS 16 and wait for the games to update. But yeah, I definitely think it will come. Okay, so all good things aside, this is still a public beta and it's not perfect by a long shot. And I would still say if this is your only iPad, then wait for a fully released version of iPadOS 16 because there's still plenty of issues here. I've made a really long list of all the ones that kept cropping up, but I'll tell you the ones which were most annoying. For me, volume controls kind of just don't work outright in multiple apps like YouTube and Spotify unless you mute it. When I plug the iPad back in after being away, the apps generally go black or they just crash in general, which isn't great. There's scaling issues all over the place and some apps kind of look fine, but then if you stretch them out, they look too small or too big and they look really strange. Sometimes the iPad crashes as a whole, although that's been a lot less frequent now. And sometimes when you open an app on the iPad, it hijacks the entire external display and it won't go into a windowed form. And finally, the last one, which was really jarring and kind of strange is if you accept a video call while you're using the main screen, it will take the video feed from here, but it will be the wrong way round and you'll look really, really strange. However, that's fine if you do take it on the iPad screen, it's just if you're on that screen. It's just kind of weird. And yeah, those are the kind of main ones I remember, but there's loads of other little glitches and mishaps here and there all over the OS. So yeah, as mentioned, it's not quite there yet, but it is a public beta, so that's absolutely fine. And I think this just shows some real promise, and I really hope Apple takes their time to make it as good as it can be, because there's been some true glimpses here of it being a totally awesome setup, which I think a lot of people will really love. So that just about rounds up this video and this wonderful little iPad desk setup. I've really enjoyed using this, but I'll be certainly heading back to the Mac Studio for now. I'm going to save my full review of iPadOS 16 until it officially releases, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. If you've started using your iPad in a desk setup situation, then I'd love to hear about your experience in the comments below. And of course, I will see you all in the next one.